Good morning, everyone. Good morning. That was very nice. Very nice. Let's stand together, and I want to read uh, Psalm 138. is the, is the lecture, one of the lectionary psalms this morning. I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name, for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above your name, and in the day when I cried out, you answered me and made me bold with with strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, and when they hear the words of your mouth, yes, they will sing, they will sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord, and though the Lord is on high, yet he regards the lowly, but the proud he knows from afar. And though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me, you will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand will save me, and the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever, so do not forsake the works of your hands. Lord, we pray that you would not only be with us today, but that you would be with all those who call on your name, and that those that are seeking you today, they will find you, and that they and they and us will both just Sense your presence, Lord, this morning in a special way. So overfill us with your magnificent and your furious love, and we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. 
Don't sit down yet. We're going to sing some songs to the Lord. Everybody jumped right back up this one.
You have to have a lot of breath for that song.
grace and peace to you, my friends. Will you join your hearts to mine and let us pray together this morning? Gracious God, we give you thanks for this place and this time. We come to this holy place, your holy sanctuary, that we might get a glimpse of you, that we might feel your presence, that we might feel closer to you, Lord. Nevertheless, Father, we come, many of us, with hearts heavy with concerns. Some of us with serious health concerns or people we know with serious health concerns. And we pray that you, your hand would be in those places, that you would bring your healing touch to those who are hurting, who are afraid, Lord, our hospitals are filled to overflowing with people who would give all they own to be able to get up, put on their clothes, and come to a house of worship on Sunday morning. Thank you, Lord, that we are able to do that this morning. Father, there are those who are facing strained and fractured relationships, struggling with finances, that are causing them to live in fear. Be present with all of those. Lord, your word says that we are to sing to you a new song. And so we, we pray that you would save us from that tired one note song of carping and complaining and criticizing, but that you would grant to us a new song of love and peace and joy. And so, Lord, be present with us now in this time of worship. Amen. Good morning. If you're a guest with us today, we are so glad that you chose to join us today, or maybe you just haven't been here for a while, or maybe you've been coming for a few weeks and um, still trying to figure us out. Um, we would like to give you some information, and so we have this phone number you can text welcome to, or there's some cards in the seat back in front of you, and you can take those back um, to the table in the back at the connecting point, and Cami would love to greet you and get to know you and give you some information about us. Um, there is an, also a note back there from Arlene Small, if anybody would like to check that out. Um, and find out what she has been up to. There's a board meeting after service, so board members, don't be like me and totally forget about it. I did my reports earlier in the week, and then this morning, I was like, oh yeah, we have a board meeting. I guess I better tell Sam to come over a little bit later today. Um, and then there's no kids or teens activities this Wednesday night, but there is a caravan workers meeting. So if you're planning to work in caravan this year with our children, please be at that. There's also an evangelism meeting right now. The evangelism team is myself and Pastor Scott. So I would love to have some other people there and give some input about things that we can do here locally. And then later in the month, we're actually going to be having a meeting with anybody who wants to go on a missions trip. And that's going to be August 24th. First, I believe, somewhere around there. Whatever that Sunday is, right after church, we're going to have lunch. We're going to feed you, get ideas, figure out what we want to do for our next mission trip and talk about ones that we can drive to and also international ones. So please mark your calendar, plan to be a part of that, look for more information. On August 4th and 5th will be the Global Leadership Summit. You've heard us talk about this years past. It happens every year, the beginning of August. We're going to be simulcasting it here at East Valley. These are really great because everybody in here has some influence. You do. So every one of you is a leader. You have people that follow you. So that's what this is about. And we all get better when the leader gets better. So if you want the people around you to get better, you need to get better and be at this leadership conference, okay? Um, some of the people that are going to be speaking at that are Ron Howard. I don't know all of these. Andy Stanley. Um, let's see. I don't know all of these. Vanessa Van Edwards, she was there last year. And, and Craig Rochelle, awesome speaker, preacher. And actually, the very first Global Leadership Summit, I think it was the first one we went to, 
he spoke about literally stepping out of your insecurities and stepping up to what God has planned for you to do. And that has stuck with me. And there are days, last weekend was one of them. I had some things going on and it's like, okay, God has put me in this place and I've got to step out of this and literally step into what God has planned for me. And he said he will do that on Sunday mornings. When he gets up to preach, he will literally take that step to get out of those insecurities and to step into what God has planned for him. And God has planned for all of you. So I, I recommend that you sign up for this. Um, you can contact me. We do have some scholarships that are available to help pay for the cost of it. So. Well, I've been praying for the Lord's help this morning. Um, it's been a very distracting. I've been very distracted this week, frazzled. Of course, as I get older, I find that that happens more often. Um, but yesterday, I was asked, or I had been asked, to play for the wedding, and was you know so privileged to do so. And but I was nervous about it because I hadn't played for a wedding for a long time, and I was playing unaccompanied, which meant I had no backup or anything to cover up what I was doing, right? And so, so when all was said and done, you know, I felt pretty good about it. I thought it went well. I was thanking God for getting me through it and got home and I thought, I'm just gonna rest for a little while and, and uh, went to take my shoes off and I'd been wearing two different shoes <laughs> to the wedding. And Granted, they were about the same color, and they're both sandals. So either nobody noticed it, or they had, didn't have the heart to tell me. <laughs> but I'm wearing the right pair. So, um, so I pointed it out to Jack, and he said, well, now you have a backup pair that just like them. <laughs> so um, anyway... Lord will help me through it. Uh, this song needs no introduction. Uh, Jesus loves me. I'm so glad he loves me. Um, so, see if I can get through this one.
Jesus loves you. Jesus loves me. Do you know that Jesus loves you? We need to, we don't need to love God more. We need to know how much God loves us. And the more we know that God loves us, the more that we can love him back. And he loves you. Loves you just the way you are. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we go into this, um, continuing this series of your prayer that you taught your disciples, Lord, I'd ask as we look at this passage this morning that, Lord, you would have your way in our hearts this day and that your will would be done here at East Valley as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. I, amen. You have no idea how much God wants to use you, how much God wants to bless you. The things that God can do in your life are incredible. They really are. But God wants to do it through a clean vessel. You have to pray the prayer of cleansing and mean it. We've been looking at the Lord's Prayer, the Lord's Prayer connecting with God and how to connect with God. And the first message we looked at a few weeks ago was the prayer, the prayer of connection. Our Father. God is our Father. Most people, their hang-ups about God have to do with their Father, their earthly Father. And you might have had a, a great earthly Father, but even earthly fathers, as great as they are, are not perfect. But your Heavenly Father is. You might have had a terrible Father. Your Heavenly Father is nothing like that. Your Heavenly Father is perfect. He loves you. And then we looked at the prayer of surrender. Jesus in the garden, what did he pray? Not my will, but your will be done. That's, that's the prayer of surrender when we pray, your kingdom come and may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we pray that because very Always God's will is done in heaven, but very rarely is God's will being done on earth. Just read the news. And then we had the prayer of dependence. Give us this day. It doesn't say give us this week, give us this month, or give us this annual. Give us this day our daily greeds. No, our daily bread. And God wants to meet your needs and all of your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. God's wealth and God's resources will never run dry. He will never go bankrupt. And God can meet all of your needs. And he does that. The song we sang on the goodness of God and all my life you've been faithful. The first Sunday we sang that song was, was the day after my mother died last year. And as, every time we sing that song, it will really affect me because all my life God has been faithful to give me Christian parents, to give me an opportunity to serve in God's church, children who love the Lord and grandchildren who, who love the Lord. God wants to bless your life more than you would ever want to be blessed. God wants you to be happier more than you want to be happy. And today we're looking at the prayer of cleansing. And that is, forgive us our sins, or our debts, or our transgressions as we forgive our debtors, those who sin against us, our transgressors. Today, listen to me, there is no reason that anyone should leave here with any guilt. You can do business with God and walk out guilt-free. It's a good deal. Let's, let's get into it. The path to a fresh start and a clear conscience. Write this down. 
As you walk in, the sermon notes are right out there for you if you don't print them out or use the app. I encourage you to follow along with these. First of all, review every area of my life. Make a personal assessment. Make a list of everything that's wrong in your life. I encourage you to maybe even do that on a sheet of paper. Just now, you're not going to you're not going to publish this on Facebook or on Instagram. And if you do this alone, you may even want to burn the paper. Or you could do this even today, but you need to review in your mind with God every area of your life. The Bible says this in Lamentations. Let us test and examine our ways. You probably know this verse in, in Psalm. This is what David prayed. He said, he said, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Any anxious thoughts? Do you know the Bible in Psalms says, fretting only leads to evil? Wow. And know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive, the King James says, any wicked, any offensive way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. This is the prayer. God turned the spotlight on my life. And the Holy Spirit is like a laser. God will reveal any area of your life that needs forgiveness. God won't make it specific. It's not vague. If you don't know what it is, the devil will make things vague. But the Holy Spirit will pinpoint. And you can't get away from that. question is, how bad do you want God's blessing? Or are you going to live in denial? Some people think denial is a river in Egypt. Denial and God's blessings do not work together. You are seconds away from liberation, cleansing, and purity that you have never had and total freedom that could set you free from your hurts and your habits and your hang-ups that have been messing up your life. Do you know why we often have things immediately after the service? In a few weeks, we're going to have a one-on-one -on -one class. People are already signed up for that if you haven't gone through that. Or if you have gone through that, someone was asking, what's the benefits of membership? It's in the one-on-one -on -one class. Um, we have things right after today, a board meeting. People, someone says, well, I'm bored in this service. Does that mean that meaning's for me? No, no, it's a different board, okay? Um, let that share. There's going to be a, a meeting after church. We're going to feed you on, on a missions trip. And those who are interested in mission trips going internationally and, and locally or on the state or in the California. Do you know why we have those right after church? Because you're already here. And you don't have to come back. And there's a better chance that we'll get you to come if we have it right after church. It's the same reason we often open up the altar. You're already here. And you can do business with God today. The Bible says, if you hear his voice... Do not harden your hearts. Today you are here and God wants to bless your life. Why wait another hour or another week or another month? Denial and blessing do not work together. And God wants to bless your life in incredible ways. The second is this. Repent of every sin. Every sin, everything you've done wrong, you need to give to God. You committed it, you need to tell God. You need to confess. What does it mean to repent? It means I take responsibility for my sin. I don't rationalize. You know what rationalize is? A rational lie. You don't lie to yourself. You don't rationalize it. You don't excuse it. You don't accuse it. Well, 
so-and-so, or this was done to me, or I'm the victim. You take responsibility. That's what it means to repent. You take responsibility. And then you do a U-turn. You turn away from where you're going or what that was, that sin. You turn away. God always allows you turns. You turn away. You repent. But God always provides then the next thing, and that is you turn towards something. You, you don't just say, well, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop kicking my cat. I'm going to stop kicking my cat. I'm going to stop kicking my cat. God wants you to stop kicking your cat, but he turns you to do something Good, you start petting your cat or taking care of your cat or whatever it is. And with God, it's you turn away from sin and you turn toward God. If you don't turn toward God and you just turn, try to turn, I'm going to stop smoking, I'm going to stop cheating, I'm going to stop watching pornography, I'm going to stop uh, uh, telling lies, I'm going to stop uh, uh, yelling, I'm going to stop getting angry, I'm going to stop, stop whatever that is, and you don't turn to God, you're going to keep going right back to the habit. Does that make sense? You have to turn toward God. Look at this verse. Let us turn again in repentance to the Lord. Let us lift our hearts and hands to God in heaven and say, we have sinned and rebelled. The greatest holdup to your hang-up is you, but God wants to heal your life. John, 1 John 1, 8 says, if we claim to be without sin... We deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. We are a holiness church. We believe that God wants us to be clean vessels, that God wants us to be holy. But sometimes people think if you're in a holiness church that you're never, ever going to sin. Well, you are. And that's why David said, search me, O Lord, and see if there be any wicked or offensive way in me. Test me if there, and know my anxious thoughts. And lead me in the way of everlasting. We believe in entire sanctification. The Holy Spirit gives you the power that you will not ever sin, but to give you the power not to sin. And if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Listen, the things that defeat you in your life, the self-defeating habits that you don't like, you will stop defeating yourself when you stop deceiving yourself. That's good to write down. You will stop defeating yourself when you stop deceiving yourself. Do you remember the story? It's about the woman who came and Jesus was with the Pharisees, and with Simon, and he, Simon, this, this Pharisee, and it was at his home, and eating, this lady came, and her tears started crying, and, and her tears started, were on Jesus' feet, and she started cleaning his feet with, with her hair, and she took that expensive perfume, and she broke it, and, and all those Pharisees were going, well, if he was really a man of God, he would know that this woman, this prostitute, and she'd know what type of woman she is. He must not be, you know, really a man of God. And Jesus said to the host, Simon, he goes, Simon, let me, let me tell you a story. A man loaned money to two people, 500 pieces of silver to one and 500 pieces to the other, but neither of them could repay him. So he kindly forgave them both, canceling their debts. Who do you suppose loved him more after that? Simon answered, I suppose the one for whom he canceled the larger debt. That's right, Jesus said. Then he said, look at this woman kneeling. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me to wash your, to water to wash, to dust from my feet, but she has washed them with her tears, wiped them with her hair. You didn't greet me with a kiss, but from the time I first came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You've neglected the courtesy of oil, olive oil to anoint my head, but she has anointed my feet with rare perfume. I tell her, her sins, and they are many, have been forgiven. So she has shown me much love, 
But a person who has been forgiven little shows little love. That's why you need to confess every sin. So you can show great love to God and to others. So you can know the fullness, all the joy of full salvation. As the old hymn says, glory, glory, glory to his name. I will praise him. I will praise him. Praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give him glory, all you people, for his blood can wash away each sin. What are you pretending that doesn't bother you or isn't a sin? Isn't it about time to stop pretending and just confess it and repent and give it to God, give it to him, turn away from it, and turn towards his grace and his power and his love and his forgiveness. Condemnation will keep you from turning towards God. Conviction brings you to God. Condemnation takes you, keeps you from God. If God is asking you to come to the altar and pray, and you don't, it's because you're feeling condemnation. And that's not from God. That's from the devil. That's from the evil one. Resolve to make restitution. Is there someone you have hurt and they know it? If possible, make restitution. You know the story of Zacchaeus? He was a tax collector, and he was, and he was a, a cheater. Can you imagine anybody cheating on taxes? And he was a tax collector. And Jesus came to him, and, and he says, and, and, and he repented, and he said this. He said, if I have cheated anyone out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus says, wow. Today, salvation has come to your house. Make restitution. Now, there are some restitutions you may not be able to make. Someone may have already died or someone's moved away and you can't, you can't find them. There may be, uh, you, it may have been a spouse that you've been divorced or separated with and, and to go and to, to say or talk to him or her would just bring up old wounds and would not be helpful. Um, if you gossip or slandered about someone and they don't know it, uh, <laughs> that may not be helpful to go to that person and say... <laughs> Well, let me tell you what I've been saying about you. <laughs> now, God may want you to go to the people you have talked to and say, I was wrong in saying what I said about you-know-who. Okay. But where it's possible, make restitution. Well, this help bring resolve and reconciliation, or will this make things matters worse. Like I said, if it's going to hurt the person, then that's, then you're just doing it for your own benefit and you're not thinking about them. Where it's possible, make restitution. Number four, and receive God's forgiveness. You don't have to be shy about coming before God. The Bible says this, I love this verse, let us come boldly before the throne of our gracious God. And there we will receive his mercy and find grace to help us when we need it. What's the difference between mercy and grace? Well, here's one way of looking at it. Mercy is forgiveness for what I've done in the past. And grace is now the power to live the way God wants me to live. Mercy takes care of the past, and grace gives me the power to go further and to go on and to live for God. You come to God with it all, and God gives you both mercy and grace. You don't beg. You don't bargain. God, if you forgive me, I'll read my Bible 10 hours every day. 
and I'll pray the, the rest of the hours of the day. All day long, God. If, if you, no, you don't bargain. You don't bribe God. You, you, you simply believe God's promises. What are God's promises? I love this. I love this verse. But if we freely admit that we have sinned, we find God utterly reliable. You see, your salvation and God's forgiveness is not based on what you have done, but it's based on the character of God. God is utterly reliable and straightforward. He forgives our sins and makes us thoroughly clean from all that is evil. 1 John 1, 9 in the Phillips translation. Well, how do you do it? You confess. Do you know the word, the word in the Greek for confession is? Homo lego. The word, it's, it's a compound word. Homo, meaning the same, like homosexual, homogenized milk. Homo is the Greek word for same. And logo is a word that comes from the word logos, which means word. It simply means to speak the same. To simply, to say, God, yes, I, I have sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. This was wrong. God, forgive me. Confession is not saying, God, I'll never do that again. That's not confession. Confession is simply saying, God, you're right. I was wrong. You speak the same with God. God already knows this. The Bible says this. Since we are justified, in the Amplified Version, acquitted and declared righteous, through faith, let us grasp the fact that we now have peace and reconciliation with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. What does justified mean? It means just as if I've never sinned. That's what God does for you. God will make you just as if you have never sinned. It's a, it's a legal term. God takes, if I had, I wish I had a, a mallet, and I would hit the pulpit here, and that's what it's like. He's a judge, and he hits the desk, and he says, I, I declare you not guilty. You're free. And you have peace and reconciliation with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Our legal system, I've seen, I've seen people in our legal system, they get out of jail, they get out of prison, and there's still a warrant for them in another county or another city. And they're, they're just still not free. And they're, they're entwined in this legal system that just keeps them down. God is not like that. Everything is broken. <laughs> the chains are broken in your life. All those things are holding you back, and you are free. If the sun sets you free, you are free indeed. Pastor, but you don't know what I've done. I've had an affair. So what? You don't think God can forgive that? I've had an abortion. So what? You don't think God can forgive that? I have same-sex attraction, or I've been in a same-sex relationship. So what? You don't think God can forgive that? I have a sex addiction. So what? You don't think God can forgive that? I've stolen from my company. You don't think God can forgive that? What I have done could send me to jail. You don't think God can forgive that? The Bible says this in Isaiah. Come, God's speaking. Let's talk this over. No matter how deep the state of your sins, I can take it out and make you as clean as the freshly... I know this may be foreign to us here. Go up north... Why do they call snowflake snowflake? 
as clean as the freshly fallen snow. Forgiveness doesn't mean that you're perfect. It just means you're forgiven. Forgiveness doesn't mean you're perfect. It just means you're forgiven. You're free. Now, step number five. This next step, I'm going to tell you, is the hardest. Are you ready? Reveal my faults and sins to a friend. Mm. Not 15. Don't put it on Facebook. Not even a five to one other person. You know, our Catholic brothers and sisters have something over us as evangelicals where they go in and they confess to a, a priest. And we believe you confess Jesus our high priest and we, you confess to him. And we confess to Jesus to forgive us of our sins. Yes. But the Bible says this. Confess your sins to Jesus. Is that what it say? And I looked it up. I, I thought, well, that word there in the Greek, I, I bet you that means faults. Confess your faults to each other. Uh, it means sins. Confess your sins and pray for each other so that you may be forgiven. Is that what it says? No. Here's the difference. When we confess to Jesus, Jesus forgives us. But if you only confess to Jesus, you lack the emotional healing that God wants to give you. If you just want to be forgiven and keep holding on to the baggage and the emotional junk, keep it to yourself. Put on that mask. Keep wearing that mask. Just keep coming to church and keep saying, everything is great. And the world out there is going to hell because we're not being real and, and realistic. When all around us are people who have faults and mistakes and sins, and nobody's perfect until we get to heaven. There's a biblical definition of perfection. That's for another sermon. But perfect as that we'll never fault or, or sin, you have to do this. You have to call. You have to have somebody in your life that you can say, you know, I've already shared this with God. I've already confessed to God. I don't need any counseling. I just need someone who will just listen to me. And I just need to get this off my chest. And you know what? That person, you need to find a mature Christian, someone who loves you and someone who will keep it just confidential. But you know what? They're not going to be shocked. Probably what you're sharing with them, they've already struggled with themselves. And they're going to feel honored. And they're not going to think less of you. And they're going to pray for you and support you and love you. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be not forgiven. You've already been forgiven. So that you may be healed. Why does God want to do this? Because God knows your biggest problem is relational. Relational with him, relationship, relational with others. And God created us that we need others, and you need others. We're going through this together, this Christian walk, this Christian life, and you need someone else. You don't need to be a lone ranger Christian. Also, you share it with the same sex. You don't, guys, don't confess, don't talk to women. women I mean... They'll be blown away. <laughs> and vice versa. If you guys would be blown away. Huh? What? You 
Keep it to the same gender. The secret you want to hide, listen to me, is the secret you need to reveal. We have two female pastors in our church. You can talk to Pastor Frankie, Pastor Lynette. We have three ordained ministers in our church. Talk to me. You can talk to Pastor David, to Pastor Kurt. You can find someone in your small group. You can find someone that lives somewhere else. But whatever, find someone and become emotionally healed. But I have this compulsion, this addiction. So what? We're in a broken world. How soon should I do this, Pastor? As soon as possible. Because this is what I want for you. What happiness for those whose guilt has been forgiven. What joys when sins are covered over. What relief for those who have confessed their sins and God has cleared their record. Okay, last step. Repeat these steps regularly. Okay? Repeat these steps regularly. Write that down. This verse here, I put it all on one slide. I know it's kind of small. Uh, but I can read it up there, and I hope you can read it there. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to, to cleanse us from guilty conscience. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promises is faithful. Remember, it's God's character. God says, I will do this, and God does it. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us, not give up meet, let us not give up meeting together as some are doing. He's talking about small groups. I was going to bring that in somewhere in the sermon. But let us encourage one another. Now, let me give you some important life advice. I'm a father. I've had children. I'm a grandfather. And let me give you important advice. Never procrastinate on changing a diaper. <laughs> because it only gets worse and always comes out in the end. <laughs> I've been waiting all this sermon to say that. Okay, here's another one. Take a bath. Take a shower regularly. People will appreciate it. Take the trash out. Don't let it just sit there in the kitchen smelling after you put that chicken in there that went bad last week and it's still in there. Take out the trash. Jesus says, do this. Jesus says that we are to pray. Forgive us our transgressions, our sins, our trespasses. Forgive us. Jesus says, do this. God wants to bless and use your life. You say, well, God, he, God can use me, me. Yes, God uses all sorts of vessels. He uses small vessels. He uses big vessels. He uses plain vessels. He uses ordinary vessels. Pastor Frankie preached about that two weeks ago. He uses shy vessels. He uses broken vessels. But God will not use a dirty vessel. That's why we're a holiness church. God wants to use you, and he wants to bless your life. Now, this is a test. Are you going to do it? If you had that sheet of paper, see, this is where you really want to have that sermon notes. You could look at that sermon notes and look at all the let us on that. It says, let us test. Let us turn. Let us come boldly to find grace. Let us grasp the fact that we are now have peace and reconciliation with God. And then this verse, look at it, how many times it says let us. Let us draw near. Let us hold unswervingly. Let us consider let us not give up meeting together. Let us encourage one another. Here's, you know, we're walking through the lettuce patch. 
We are in this together, and we need one another. These six steps are not to be taken on your own, but with others. We're in the same boat. We all need forgiveness. We all need cleansing. And God wants to bless all of us. But your first step, your first step is with God. Your first step is with God. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? How many would say this morning, you know, the Holy Spirit has pointed out something, or the Holy Spirit has pointed out several things. And it's specific. It could be something little like being unkind to someone on the phone or it could be something big it could be a big hang up that you have uh, an addiction uh, a habit that that you have tried to kick on your own and you just haven't done it uh, it could be a variety of things but it's in between you and God from something small to something big without me having any idea what it is, and with my eyes closed, and with all our eyes closed, if God has pointed out something to you this morning, with no one looking around, will you just lift your hand up? If you're afraid that the person beside you is going to see and they're peeking, then just raise your little pinky or your finger. Now, say the same thing to God. Confess, say the same. God has loved you enough to pinpoint these things Name it before God right now where you sit. Each one. As you confess, as you name that, the Lord, as that is layered off like an onion, all of a sudden you see that there's the Holy Spirit may be now revealing something below that. Yeah, that's okay. Tell that to God. Folks, I've already gone through this this week. And it was one thing after another. Keep going until you get, and there's no more layers. Remember, deceit and denial and God's blessings do not go together. He loves you enough to bring these things out to you. Simply confess those to Him. Heavenly Father, this day you've heard the prayers of your people. And Father, there, for some, there may be like that, that lady. And they may continue throughout this day praying. But boy, do they have the opportunity to show great love. 
because the layers are deep and many. But they will know that they've been forgiven of many things. And they will love you so much and love others. Bless them. Keep them. Now, Lord, we talked about the difficult assignment. And I pray, Lord, that you'll give the grace as they turn away from these things. Give them the grace to find someone that they can just talk to. They don't need counseling. They don't need advice. They just need to share it with someone. And let them know the joy of full salvation. Bring your forgiveness. Let not one person walk out of here with guilt and not and do not let one person walk out here with emotional baggage and the ones who do Lord help them to find that person they can confide in I would even ask father that you would bring that person to them <laughs> if they are having hesitancies to go to that person, let that person come to them. But Lord, don't let them wait. Give them the grace. Let them rely on your grace. They relied on your mercy to forgive them of their sins. Now let them rely on your grace to find the healing that comes when we confess. Let us confess to one another so that we may be healed. And then, Lord, use us in a world that needs forgiveness, they need mercy, and a world that needs grace. The power to live in your blessings. And I pray these things in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Remember, there's a board meeting after church. Go in the grace and the peace of God. You are dismissed.